that I take this on. I'm hoping that I don't go home today and think I'm just going to stick to my old way of learning and my old routine. In Nottingham, another young dyslexic is trying to transform the way he lives his life by learning to read and write from scratch in order to help him find a job. Michael is the same age as Kara. He only learned a year ago that he's severely dyslexic. He relies on his girlfriend Karina to help him job hunt because for most of his life he's been unable to read or write at all. Hours can be flexible by Agreement. Okay. Arrangement. I know you got it right, don't I? Mm. Position is temporary. No, I ain't got a clue what that says. Ongoing. Ongoing. Please enter your ten key skills separated by icons. Ten what skills? Yeah. Well, um, kind. Yeah, kind. Still can't spell kind. You can try. Gone with the easy on the swell. K. Yeah. I. Yeah. D. No. Kind of. I don't know. ND. Flexible. Kara wants to know how Michael has coped since being excluded from school at 15. When it comes to reading and writing, I just couldn't do it at all. Like, am I thick or what? What's up with me? Did you know what you were going to do? I really wanted a job. I really wanted to stick at a job. As soon as he asked me to do a bit of paperwork, I felt embarrassed to tell him that I couldn't read or write, and it's so embarrassing. You want to say, do you fill this format, or can you write your name and address down there, please? Or and I felt an idiot. Because you just couldn't? I just couldn't do it. Michael turned to crime and spent time in prison for a string of offences. It was a bit of tearaway. In and out cop shops, in and out jail. And I used to get fed up thinking, surely there's something better in life than this. So I'm not going to blame it all on me being dyslexic in the way I've turned out and the, the things I've done. Not at all. After his last stay in prison a year ago, the probation service sent Michael for a dyslexia test. How did it make you feel when they told you? You were dyslexic. What what was that like? I was over the moon, really, to tell you the truth. Like the fans, some of that, that won't just thick at school. Since then, he's been attending weekly dyslexia support classes. I felt things changing. Like the first one I went, I couldn't even do the alphabet. <laughs> like before, I couldn't spell Nottingham at all, but now I can spell it. And that's a big that's a big word to me, Nottingham. Mm. It's like, whoa. Now Michael wants to take responsibility, find work and stay out of trouble. What would be the ideal job and what would you be looking for? Um, I'd do anything now, to tell the truth. I'd work his own. Give me a chance. Because I'm not I'm not um, embarrassed now to, to go up to them and say, look, I can't read on right. But I'd love to grab a book. Full book, a big thick book. Read it from start to finish. I would love to do that. <laughs> Me too. Just get lost in the books, and do you know what I mean? I really would. If you can read and write, you get a lot further in life. I think anyway. Oh. <laughs> oh, we go on fish. Michael hopes he can slowly turn his life around with the help of his dyslexia classes. Talking to other young dyslexics for the first time in her life is making Kara realise that what can really make one dyslexic's life different from another's is whether they get support. When you meet someone on a personal level and you hear what he's been through, I think it's more upsetting and it makes me feel angry that there's, there's hundreds and thousands of kids going through that every day. And I would have been one of them, no doubt about it, I would have been one of them, but I had the support that they should have all had. And we really need to wake up and kind of think about how we teach kids and so that these kids aren't getting lost out there. Things are brightening up for Kara.
a month into her dyslexia classes and she's trying out the new techniques for real after she had news from that audition. And I got the job, which is brilliant. Um, I'm playing a really lovely um, guest lead role and I was able to use what I'd learned in my last training session for that job. Kara's now becoming a natural at rerouting information from her short to her long-term memory. By associating her lines with colours, buzzwords and her physical movement around the room, she's learning her scripts in just half the time it used to take her. And she no longer needs the help of her mum and dad. It's in. Using the, the new way of learning my lines was definitely a deeper way of learning and helped with that job so much. And when I got on set, I realised that I wasn't thinking so much and it had just gone in. This is something that I will take on and practice forever now. Now she's seen how much her life can improve. Kara wants to read a book cover to cover, more than ever. For some dyslexics, the way words are laid out on the page adds to the difficulty they have reading. So Kara's going to see optometrist Nigel Burnett Hodd. When you're reading a a book, do you see all the words all in line, or do you sometimes see them swirling around? Or yeah, I, I mean, I just get these marks in the in the mm. page, almost yeah. like the white yeah. really comes through yeah. in the gaps. Become sort of confused. Yeah. Nigel thinks the white background can trigger this visual stress. And what I believe, you know, if you're in a dark room, you suddenly go into a very bright surrounding. It's like, oh, yeah. like that. For you, it's like that all the time for a white background. So we need to soften down the white background. Every colour has a different wavelength. For some dyslexics, white is too intense for the brain to process easily. And what we do is we use colour filters to slow down the wavelength of light. So a book that used to take you four hours to read, you'll read in two hours. But not only that, but after the two hours, we would ask you what happened in the book, and you'll actually say, oh, I remember this, this, and this. It sounds and like my miracle. But if I put this over it... Yeah, that straight away makes it comfortable. The black looks kind of raised yeah. and almost brings it back to the white. So and it sort of calms it down. Calms it, yeah. So if I put this one over the front, a greeny colour. That's really good. Uh-huh. Next, Nigel tests Cara's eyes to make sure there are no other problems. The green colour Cara has chosen is now broken down into a spectrum so that she can choose just the right shade to help her read more easily. I think this one's better. Yeah, it makes it more comfortable. That's my colour. Nigel has prescribed Cara dark green lenses. So I'll just pop this on your bridge. <laughs> Look very, very intelligent. <laughs> Cara now has to wait for her new specs to be made up to see if they'll help her fulfill her dream of diving into the world of Harry Potter. Cara's still going to her one to one classes, and for the first time, she's beginning to tackle the disorganisation that was casting a cloud over her life. At the moment, it's fantastic. I'm filming that drama that I got in, in Manchester, and that's going really well, and I'm doing Strictly Come Dancing. It's just funny that everything comes at once. She's learned how to divide up her diary into colourful hourly slots. Suddenly, everything becomes timed and you can visualise yourself doing the things rather than just putting 20 things into Tuesday. It's the first time I've gone into a, another busy phase and actually been a bit prepared for it and not had to stress and be upset and angry with myself all the time because I'm so unorganised and I'm turning up to things with five bags. I'm kind of getting rid of all of that baggage that I once made my life a nightmare. <laughs> Well, almost. <laughs> I, still, I still lose things all the time. It hasn't kicked in just yet. Cara will never stop being dyslexic, but her power to change some of the habits of a lifetime is starting to sink in. I'm getting it slowly. I'm understanding what makes my life easier. Mm. 
It's been five months since Kara set off to discover what dyslexia is and the impact it can have. I thought I had the word dyslexia wrapped up in my brain and knew exactly what it meant, when in fact I look at dyslexia in a completely different way. It's not something that just affects reading. It's everything you take on every day, everything you take in is taken in in a certain way because you're dyslexic. So if in a word we have a little vowel... It has changed me and it's made me aware of who I am, why I was the way I was. And I needed to answer those questions for myself in order to get better at all those things that I didn't like about myself. This is really thick of me, but I can't think right now. The most important thing I've learned is that dyslexic people don't have to walk around with a massive cloud hanging over them. They don't need it to control and wreck their lives. Being dyslexic doesn't mean you're stupid. It doesn't mean you're thick. It just means that you need to be taught in a certain way that fits your brain and works for you. And that is all it is. My glasses have arrived. Kara's now ready to try out the life of a bookworm. They're so beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna look. I've been so excited about getting these. While there's no easy fix for the difficulty she has processing words, she's hoping her new green specs will make it easier for her to visually process the page. Tom woke Harry next morning with his usual toothless grin and a cup of tea. Harry got dressed and was just persuading a disgruntled Hedwig to get back into her cage. Who would have thought that a little bit of coloured glass would change that so much for me? There's so many books I want to read, so I could better get started on ticking off the list. If you've been affected by Cara's story and you'd like details of information and support, go to the BBC Action Line website or you can call 08000 680 133.